Hey guys, Armored Rogue here to show you how to create a game in Alchemy RPG. We'll go over creating a game, adding universes to pull content from, adding players and NPCs, as well as ensuring that all the systems are working properly such as actions and spells, as well as a general overview of the game UI. The first thing we'll do is decide which universes we'll have in our game by going to our content library. On the Content Universes tab, you can see everything that you currently have, whether it be a paid universe or one that you've created yourself in the Created tab. Today we'll be using three universes within our game, the first being the 5th edition SRD. This universe is included in the library of every new player, and will allow us to use NPCs, items, and spells from its universe within our game. Next we'll be using the Ruins of Symborum. We'll be using the free module The Promised Land, which has everything needed for a first level party of adventurers within the setting, including pre-made characters for our players if they need them. We'll also be adding tabletop audio. A free module with a wonderful collection of almost 300 ambient tracks to make our games more interesting. You can pick up the Ruins of Symborum module and the tabletop audio module in the marketplace for free. The Ruins of Symborum can be found under the Free League tab, and tabletop audio can be found by scrolling down to the bottom of the screen. Now we're ready to create our game. When we enter the Create Game screen, we can either choose Quick Start, which will add every scene from a module into our game, or we can choose Custom, which will allow us to add individual universes and allow us to pull content from every module within that universe. Here we will add 5th edition, the Ruins of Samborum, and tabletop audio. Before we hit confirm, we're going to make sure that we give our game a title, Ruins Demo, and we want to make sure that we have the correct system chosen. While currently you can't select a system from a universe that isn't compatible with the one that you've chosen, in the future you'll be able to so you can pull assets from other universes and other systems into your game, but currently we don't want to accidentally pull in any character sheets, NPCs, items, or spells that aren't compatible with the system we're trying to play or else it may cause crashes. Then when we're ready, we'll hit the confirm button at the bottom. When we load in, we can see a link that we can give to our players so they can join straight into the game or we can add players individually by searching for the usernames. Here's the edit game screen where we can add players, view our game settings, check the content, or check the safety settings. First, let's add a player to our game. When you add a player, you can also promote them to GM if you want to, or demote yourself back down to a player. Next, let's double check our content to make sure that we have everything we need. In the content tab, you can add any universes that you missed during game creation. Here we can add the 5e supplement that I created to go along with my 5e games. The description will be seen by anyone who is spectating the game and your players. Here you can add artwork to the game which can be seen by your players and spectators, allow spectators to your game, choose automatic initiative roles so that when you start an encounter, everyone rolls including the NPCs and players, private GM roles so that the players can't see when you roll, save journal messages so that they're not erased between game sessions, and enable voice and video chat within the game. We'll turn on every setting except for spectators at the time. Now we'll explore the safety tab. Here we can let our players and our spectators know the boundaries within our game, showing lines where the hard limits are for our game content, the veils for things that might be mentioned or be behind the veil, and add a mature content warning and any other content warnings that might be appropriate. To save any changes that you've made, you have to hit the confirm button at the bottom and not hit the X in the top right corner. To get back to the edit game screen, all you have to do is hit the cog at the bottom, hit edit game, or you can view the safety tools right away by hitting the safety tools button. As you can see, when you start a new game without adding any scenes beforehand, you get the default alchemy scene. When you view the details of the scene, you'll see a description of what a scene is, as well as all the different UI elements within the game, which we'll be going over now as well. On the left hand side, you can see the journal and the notes tab. The journal is something that is for all players and the GM within the game, while the notes is for each individual and is automatically saved between sessions, whether or not the journal tab is as well. On the right bottom, we have the different tabs for a GM, including the scenes, the story details that are attached to each scene, any GM actions we wish to add, 
and any handouts that we decide to add to the game. When you go to add a handout, it will show you the different handouts available divided by module. Here I have two handouts already created ready to add into the game. One for the urban elements of inspiration, and one for the gameplay cheat sheet. To share the handout with our players, all you have to do is click on it, and hit the add a button in the top left corner. Here we can see the details of the handout, which will be the name, the visual, and whether or not you want it to open in full screen, as well as any metadata tags that you wish to add to make it easier to find. The content tabs where you can make any notes to share with your players. This tab supports markdown, so you can use special formatting such as headers, numbers, and inline text images. By default, handouts are not shared with your players, so you have to turn on sharing individually for each one. Again, always remember to hit the confirm button at the bottom and not the X in the upper right corner. Now let's add our scenes to our game. When we click add scene, we'll see a list of all the available scenes within our game divided by the module that they're located in. You can use the search bar at the top to locate what you want, or you can select the drop down so you can sort by a specific module. Here we can do what the quick start wanted to do, which is add all the scenes from a given module at the same time, by hitting the select all button. This will add all 19 scenes from the Promised Land module to our game. Before we do that though, note that there are NPCs listed on each scene. These NPCs will come pre-populated within the scene when we add them into the game. To switch scenes, all you have to do is click on it and hit the play button. As you can see, scenes can come preloaded with motion overlays, music, and anything else a scene might require. Before we continue, let's add our characters to the game. We can do this by clicking on the player that we added earlier. When a player joins the game for the first time, they'll be prompted to create a new character. They will get a screen similar to this, where they can create a character from scratch, or go to their library, and choose one that they've already created, or they can click on the pre-made tab where they can choose a character from the available pre-mades currently available within the game. For now, I'll add the Human Mystic Wizard. After adding a character to the game, you can see that you're already playing as that character. The GM can play as any player character or NPC within the game. While playing as a character, you can easily adjust the two main trackers available here as bars on the side of the token. All you have to do is click on either HP or XP, and you are agreed with an easy way to adjust the values at will. You can see on our left hand UI that it has been populated by the Actions, Skills, and Equipment tab. What's currently missing is a Spells tab as we are currently playing a Spellcaster. To remedy this, all we have to do is click on the character, hit Edit in the top left, go to the Spells tab, and select a Spellcasting ability for our character, which in this case, as it is a wizard, would be Intelligence. This will populate the pre-made character spell lists and make them available within the game. Once again, confirm by hitting the check mark at the bottom and not the X in the upper right corner. Now our character has the spells tab, which we can use to cast any spells that we need, which also has a pip tracker for the spell slots currently available to that character. As you can see, we don't currently have any actions for this character, which means we can't roll any attacks. In the Alchemy RPG 5e system, actions are currently tied to our equipment rather than the characters themselves. By going to the Equipment tab, we can scroll down and make sure that the items are properly equipped so that the actions are available within our action bar. As we equip them, you can see that new actions become available. And when we go back to the Actions tab, Short Bow Attack and Dagger Attack are there. When you click on an action, it will pop up with the options to roll or edit the action. If you choose to roll, you can click and drag it up or down to roll for advantage or disadvantage, or leave it as is to roll a sanded roll. As you can see, the actions currently show up in yellow, which means that they are hidden from players as we've turned on hidden GM rolls. The attack action rolls both the attack and the damage at the same time, but if you want to see the individual numbers, all you have to do is click on the numbers available, and it will pop up with a detailed description of what each roll was and the characteristics of the attack, whether that be piercing damage, the range, crit range, or ammo, depending on the item and the weapon. You can also roll skill checks for your players, as well as attribute checks or saves. All you have to do is click on an attribute, and it will give you a check or a save option. And here again, you can choose to roll with advantage, disadvantage, or make a standard roll. And with hidden GM rolls, you can easily make saves and checks without your players knowing. Let's leave this character for now by hitting the X on the playing character button in the middle of the screen. And let's move on to the next scene in our game. When we go to move to a new scene, we can either hit preview or we can hit play. When we preview a scene, it will start playing that scene along with any motion overlay or music, but it won't actually take you there 
and it won't move the players yet either. When you are ready to move to the next scene, all you have to do is hit the button again and hit play. Now it will move you and your players to the next scene. As you can hear, the music has stopped, meaning that this scene does not come preloaded with any music, so let's fix that now. When we click on the scene and then click on details, we will see a description of the story notes that have been added to the scene. To make edits to the scene, all you have to do is hit the button in the upper left hand corner and then move from the notes tab to the scenes tab, where we can change things such as the environment visual, any motion effect, and music, ambience, encounter music, and encounter ambience, meaning that the music transitions from one to another once you roll initiative. While we'll add ambience to the scene, this will list all the available audio assets you have in your game from your selected universes. Here we can also search for an individual track if we know what we're looking for. And all you have to do is click on it to add it to your game. This scene currently has the tavern motion effect available, but if we wanted to change it, we could hit the drop down and look through the other available free motion overlay effects. Once we choose one, it will show a preview of it above in the visual overlay. We can also view the tactical tab to see what maps are currently available within the scene. Here you can add any maps that you need, change their name, and choose the grid type and grid size that you wish. I've also added encounter music for when you roll initiative as well as encounter ambience which is the same as the normal ambience track. Now let's finally take a look at the NPCs. In the NPC tab, it is divided by hidden characters as well as shown characters. To show a character, all you have to do is click on them and then hit the show button in the middle. A shown character will be visible to players while a hidden character won't be. To add a new NPC to our game, we can hit the add button on the side, which will show a list of all the NPCs available in our game from the universes that we've added which will be divided by the type of NPC that they are. Here we can see all the NPCs available from the SRD, as well as the ones available from our module if we scroll really far down to look for them. But instead of doing that, let's go back to the top and search for the individual module by using the dropdown. By clicking on the Ruins of Symborum, the Promised Land, we'll see the NPCs specific to our module. We can also hit the end game button, which will show all the NPCs currently in our game divided by what scenes that they are in. Let's go ahead and scroll down and add a caravan guard to this scene. Once again, always remember to hit the confirm button at the bottom. When we are ready for combat to start, all we have to do is flip the initiative switch on the upper right hand side. This will trigger our chosen encounter music along with rolling initiative for any shown characters. Let's hit the tactical map button in the upper right hand corner and add our tokens to the battle map. Here we can add our tokens to the battle map by clicking on the character that we wish and hitting the token button, which will populate a token somewhere on screen. If you add a token for a character that is currently hidden, it will show up faded on GM view, but for players they won't be visible at all. You can show a hidden token by either showing it from the NPC screen on the right, or by clicking on the token and hitting the show button itself. When you show a character, it will automatically roll initiative and add them to the initiative tracker. You can also remove tokens from the battle map by clicking on it and then hitting the remove button. You can also easily access the trackers for a token by clicking on it and hitting the trackers button, which will allow you to change the HP and XP values without going back to the main screen. And with that, now you have everything you need to start your own game in alchemy. I'll be creating follow-up videos on how to create a scene in more detail, character creation in more detail, handouts, and universes. In the meantime, if you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments or join us in the Discord server. Happy gaming!